It is Saturday, February 19, 2011. This is uh, Mercedes Diesel Guy, and today I'm actually uh, going to do a modification here on the alternator belt uh, for, the, uh, for my 1990 Volkswagen Jetta 1.6 liter diesel. And uh, this video should apply to uh, uh, the Mark II Jetta uh, diesel and turbo diesel as well as the uh, uh, the Mark 1 because that had a very similar belt setup the um, this uh, car the diesel here uh, especially uh, tends to eat alternator belts and um, I've actually had the car since November and I've gone through um, well, I've broken two of them the first one I think might have been my fault but uh, now I'm starting to doubt that because the uh, because the second one went on me uh, in the middle of the blizzard. I, uh, thankfully, it's a diesel. I was able to drive home without the alternator, without uh, 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 you know, without killing the engine. But uh, the uh, since it was night and it was in a blizzard, the battery running all the accessories even as low as I could. I just I lost the battery, so I had to replace that a few weeks ago. Anyhow, this is uh, not a great setup here. And I'm going to be doing two things today, and I'll explain them. First off, as you can see, the uh, the belt here has uh, uh, it's cold right now. It has to be about um, a few degrees below freezing out here, which is a shame because uh, yeah, Thursday and Friday of this week uh, it was 60 degrees, which is very very nice for February in Massachusetts. But uh, just my luck, it got cold again for today, so. Anyhow, quite a bit of belt deflection here, uh, which is this uh, play you're seeing, and uh, the um, and what happens is uh, when you continually tighten this belt up, there's a lot of stress on it, and uh, you have to keep it, and eventually the belt breaks. And the reason you have to keep tightening it up is because it uh, it slips on these pulleys because it's so loose and. If it keeps slipping, it wears through the belt and snaps anyway. So it's uh, so one way I've seen online of compensating for that is uh, let me see if I can move this hose out of the way here. Right down here is where the alternator uh, that's the alternator anchor bolt. And what some what one guy has figured out how to do is replace that bolt with a longer one that goes further out like that. And on the end of that bolt, hanging a pair of these bearings, I only have one of them out of the package, and I just dropped them. Give me a second to pick that up. Okay, rolling again. See if I can hold this a little better this time. Basically, hanging two of these bearings here side by side, and using that to brace the back of the belt here, and take up a little bit of the tension. The end effect of all of that is that the um, is that the uh, belt wraps around the alternator pulley better, uh, wraps around it better, therefore you need less tension uh, on the system in general so you're not stretching the belt so much and because the, it wraps around the pulley better it gets better grip and it's much less likely to slip. So I'm doing that today, and I'm also going to replace the tensioner pulley with a brand new one. Let's see if you can see that. That goes down here, so I'm going to put a brand new one of these on in case that's part of my slipping problem. Um, so I'm going to do that, and then uh, looks like I'm running out of tape. I may not have the video for it, but uh, I may not have the uh, blank tape for it, but I'm also going to replace the speedometer cable today. So. Give me a second here. I'm going to uh, start up the engine, and you'll see uh, you'll see the uh, belt wobbling there a bit.
So as you can see, the belt is uh, rubbing there a, get, a bit against the uh, against the timing cover. The previous owner had uh, JB weld a little strip of metal down there to prevent the belt from wearing through the uh, from wearing through. And if you listen closely, you can actually hear it slipping a little bit. So uh, I'm not sure how much of this audio is actually making it out of the tape, but I'm going to shut the car off now and I'm going to modify this and uh, we'll try it again. video is still going and just one more note on that in order to replace the bolt I'm actually gonna have to get my get out my brand new uh, tap and die set and add some more threads to this bolt I, uh, I basically got all the part numbers for this stuff uh, from a guy online who had figured out how to do this but uh, this was the closest matching bolt he could find uh, but the threads are going to have to go to about here because this bolt is actually a lot longer than the original alternator anchor bolt. So I'm going to take this apart now. It shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Just a couple of bolts really holding the alternator in. And uh, thankfully, since I'm not replacing the belt, this should go pretty quickly. Just wanted to show you a quick comparison shot before I put this all back together. These are the, uh, well, this is the alternator. Uh, pivot bolt that was original to the car. This here is one of the uh, new ones I bought from the pack of five. And here's one of the new bolts modified. I uh, took it into the garage, put it in the vise, and cut all these new threads here with my uh, new uh, tap and die set. I've actually never used a, uh, a tap and die before, but it's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Just uh, somebody gave me some advice to use plenty of cutting oil when I did this, and that was good advice, so now I'm going to put this all back together and, as I said, the uh, the new uh, bearings are going to anchor here on the bolt, and the uh, the pair of them are going to act as an idler, and you'll, you'll see that all when it's, uh, when I have it all together in the car. Anyhow, uh, this is all back together now. And I apologize for this radiator hose being in the way. I'll move it out of the way so you can see some stuff here. I uh, put the same belt back on. Actually, I didn't switch belts at all because in order to do that, I have to take the AC belt off, which is a real pain in the ass to do. So, right down here, get the camera strap out of the way here so it's not going to blow into the... Uh, uh, blow uh, in front of the lens. Anyhow... Right down here, this is the new idler pulley, and this is made from the two uh, from the two bearings I ordered, which anchor onto the new longer bolt, which I showed you before. And uh, I, I shimmed it on both sides uh, with some washers uh, uh, on the inboard side, so it doesn't so the bearings themselves don't rub against the uh, alternator bracket and get caught. And on the outside here against these uh, two nuts which anchor it. I put two of them on here just so I could lock one against the other just to make it a little more secure. And then it's kind of uh, hard to see but right down here that is the brand new uh, idler pulley or the new tensioner pulley. So uh, I don't have an awful lot of uh, tension on this although I may um, loosen it up just shouldn't I, uh, I think I'm gonna maybe try this uh, I'm going back and forth on it should I uh, try it loose and see what happens or should I try it a little tighter so yeah I think I'm gonna shut the camera off just loosen that belt a little bit before I um, before I start the car and give this a try Okay, I did actually decide to loosen it up a bit, so uh, hopefully that it is a bit more loose, and that's actually kind of the point of this, uh, to get better wrap on the alternator so the belt can do its job and run looser. There's actually a number of problems with this uh, setup here, and I'm not sure what exactly causes it, but, um, but with the stock setup here, the, uh, the belt does uh, slip quite a bit. 
and as I said earlier that uh, does uh, lead to breakage and if you uh, adjust the tension so much that the uh, that the belt itself doesn't slip uh, the tension itself on the belt uh, ruins the belt and also takes quite a toll on the uh, bearings there in the alternator pulley so uh, as I said what this setup does is it gives better wrap on the alternator here uh, hopefully eliminating the slip and I also uh, put in the new tensioner pulley here uh, to eliminate that as part of the problem and of course the uh, new idler here made out of the uh, bearings I ordered and the longer bolt the, uh, I, this does introduce uh, quite a bit of a back bend into the belt but I've seen other people's solutions where they've run an even harsher back bend on the belt and um, Hopefully, though, since uh, I believe there is less tension on the system, uh, that really uh, won't cause too much extra wear and tear on the belt. Uh, right now, as it is, I am seriously considering selling the car in the spring, so uh, this doesn't actually have to last me too long, although I hope this does uh, do a nice job for the uh, new owner of the car. So, anyhow, I'm going to start it up now and see if it uh, squeals any. If it does, I'll uh, tighten the belt up a little bit and try it again. So, I'm gonna give it a try here, uh, starting up. So, uh, time will tell if this works. I don't hear any squealing right now, which is excellent. Uh, hopefully this will solve the problem. <laughs> 